Now let's see part two, factors of liquefaction. In the liquefaction, we will use some parameters. One is for the properties of soil, and two is initial stress, and three is dynamic loss. The parameters of dynamic loss. Four is uh, the uh, the factors of drainage conditions. Let's see first the properties of soil concerning with liquefaction. <laughs> first is the particle feature, and include the average particle size, d50. Uh, then is the uh, non-uniformity coefficient cu, and the fine contents. Here, in this figure, let's see the 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 factor D fifty. We can find the the vertical axel uh, is the the, <coughs> the dynamic shear stress ratio of liquefaction. That's the uh, the the dynamic law uh, the. Dynamic shear stress when liquefied uh, when liquefaction will will, will occur, uh, and we can find that the the larger value means is not easy to liquefy, and the lower value is easy to liquefy. Now let's see two sound sample, two sound samples. With dr equal to fifty and dr equal to seventy five percent. Then for these two kind of sound sample, we can find uh, the d fifty uh, the d fifty distributed in the uh, in the about in the shaded area uh, is easy to be liquefied. And this sound sample take from the Niigata of Japan, and the depth of sound is from five meter to ten meters. Then we can find that uh, the 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 D fifty the particle size the average particle size affected the liquefaction. The possibility of liquefaction of coarse sound, mid sound, and fine sound sealed uh, gradually increases. It's difficult to liquefy sound with non uniformity coefficient more than 10. And when the clay content is more than 10, uh, the dynamic stability of, sound, uh, of soil increases. Yes, here, here we we talk by about the fine quantity contents. Here, in this picture, I can uh, show you the the uh, the effects of the uh, the uh, fine contents. Uh, this is D ten. Uh, uh, and we can find that the, the uh, if the fine contents increase, then it's difficult to liquefy. Uh, vertical axis axis is the uh, acceleration for liquefaction. Uh, we can find uh, the fine contents increase, and then you cost the uh, liquefied acceleration uh, acceleration increase. Now let's see density feature. Uh, for density, uh, we will use some. Uh, we will use many uh, many uh, features, uh, ma many parameters. But uh, these three are related to the liquefaction. Uh, one is relative density. Just now I show you it's dr relative density. And the second one is void ratio. Uh, is used to de describe the how much is voice. Uh, and uh, dr 
uh, uh, dry density. Uh, dry density means the, in the in the in the unit volume, how much is solid particles? Here, this is the the uh, figures for dr. Uh, and the uh, vertical cell uh, axis is uh, is the dynamic load for uh, uh, dynamic load, uh, and the horizontal axis is uh, relative density dr. We can find uh, and these curves is for the uh, for the different 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 shear stress. Uh, or failure stress. Uh, you see, if we apply the load on the soil sample, uh, uh, it will cause the, the strain. Uh, but uh, but the uh, but the how much strain? Uh, uh, with the uh, with different relative density, we need. Uh, different dynamic load to cause the same strain, and for this strain we can find uh, these curves with different strain, and from bottom to top, uh, the 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 strain is will increase. Uh, the the bottom one is a strain of one, and the the higher two, three, four. The top one is five, uh, five strain is five percent. Uh. then we can we can find that uh, if we draw a horizontal line, uh, with the same dynamic load, with the same dynamic load, the higher relative density will cause the lower strain. Uh. then. Relative density will affect uh, the liquefaction, and the higher relative density, lower strain, and lower strain means uh, is uh, will not it will not liquefy. Uh, then let's see another feature is structure feature. Uh, uh, arranged and the same feature of the soil particles here. We mainly uh, uh, is the main topics. First is undisturbed soil is more difficult to liquefy than remounted soil. The second is the old sound layer is more difficult to liquefy than the new sound layer. I think this. This just due to the cement. And third is sound that has suffered earthquake is more difficult to liquefy than sound that has not suffered earthquake. And the uh, fourth is uh, liquefaction resistance of preloaded soil samples is improved. That means if we apply the preload on the soil, then it will uh, increase the resistance of liquefaction. And the effects of saturation degree. Let's see, usually we talk about the saturation occurred in saturated soil. That means the saturation degree is 100%. But it 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 doesn't mean uh, unsaturated soil will not liquefy. Why? Because during the shaking, some some uh, some soil, uh, some unsaturated soil with saturation higher saturation degree will tend to saturated soil gradually. Uh, and uh, that means higher saturation degree, uh, easier to tend to saturated soil or easier to be liquefied. Uh, then let's see. Uh, 
this is a a, a figure uh compile uh discuss the, the effects of uh, saturation degree uh, the vertical axis is the uh Is a uh, is a certain uh, coefficient b uh, and this coefficient is to use this uh, in, in fact is used to describe the the saturation degree uh, and when b equal to one uh, uh, that means this sound is saturated. And uh, if B equal to zero, that means it's, it's uh, 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 a dry sound. Uh, and usually this Camden coefficient B uh, tested or get in Traxel test. First, uh, we apply the confining stress on the soil sample. Then we observe the how much is the uh, excess power water pressure in soil specimen is delta U, and delta sigma 3 is confining stress. For saturated soil, how much you apply it as a confining stress, and how much is increment for excess power water pressure, then B should be equal to zero. But for unsaturated soil, when you apply the, the confining stress, first, the, the the load will use to let the unsaturated soil to be saturated. Then uh, the 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 left confining stress will not reach to the full value. Uh, then delta U will lower than delta sigma three. Uh, for unsaturated soil, be lower than one. <coughs> And uh, uh, lower B value means lower uh, saturation degree. <coughs> saturation degree. <coughs> Let's see this point that, and uh, the fitting line means uh, the uh, horizontal axel is the uh, cyclic uh, cyclic number for cyclic load uh, to liquefy. Uh, and uh, we can find the higher saturation degree need low need less cyclic number of s s dynamic load. Uh, that means uh, it's easy to liquefy. Uh, that means higher saturation degree uh, easier to liquefy. <laughs> then next is uh, initial stress. Uh, and the larger vertical effective stress sigma v prime and the lower prob probability of liquefaction. That means uh, uh, for deeper soil uh, with higher vertical effective stress, then it's not easy to liquefy. <coughs> and uh, usually we don't, don't, don't talk about the liquefaction uh, with the depth of larger than 20 meters, uh, because the deeper soil, higher vertical effective stress. Then larger initial consolidation stress ratio, Kc, uh, that's equal to sigma 1c over sigma 3c, uh, or tau 0 over sigma 3c. Uh, <coughs> that's Kc. Uh, uh, you see, in, in the ground, uh, uh, sigma 3c means uh, horizontal uh, or uh, average effective stress. And the tau 0 is the horizontal stress, uh, the horizontal uh, shear stress. Then, uh, the larger initial cons consolidation stress ratio Kc, larger the Kc, and the lower prob probability of liquefaction. Uh, and that means if initially the horizontal stress, shear stress is larger, then 
is not easy to liquefy. The third, sigma d over 2 twice sigma 3c. If it's less than 0 0.5 times kc minus 1, then power pressure will not cause liquefaction. And in this condition, liquefaction will not occur. If sigma d over 2 sigma 3c larger than 0 0.5 times kc minus 1, and it, 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 it will liquefy. And here, uh, there's, uh, there's a comparison of, of it. Uh, tau over sigma 0 uh, or sigma c uh, is the uh, vertical axle. And the, the <coughs> uh, that's the, the uh, dynamic load. In fact, it's uh, it is it is uh, uh, modified uh, dynamic load to liquefy, and the horizontal axel is uh, initial shear stress ratio. Just now I talked about tau over sigma c. We can find for 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 the sound with different relative density, the behavior are same. And uh, higher, uh, higher uh, initial shear stress ratio, and then higher uh, is not uh, uh, not easy to liquefy. <coughs> and the factors of dynamic law. Now we talk about the factors of dynamic laws uh, include the wave shape. Amplitude, frequency, lasting time, and force direction. <coughs> First, let's see wave shape. Uh, and there's a uh, uh, different types of law. Uh, first is a uh, shock type law, uh, and for this kind of law, only in part of the, the time has the same maximum acceleration. Before this, only one or two peaks have more than sixty percent of the maximum amplitude. That's the shock type law. And uh, of course it's a kind of uh it's a kind of wave uh wave. <coughs> uh for example uh earthquake wave. And next is vibration type law waves. There are more than three peaks in one side of maximum amplitude whose amplitude is more than 60 of the maximum amplitude. That means there's a few uh, larger uh, peak value. And then we, we define it as a vibration types of waves. Then, and the shock types of wave, power water pressure increases suddenly. Uh, of course it is. And the vibration types of wave, power pressure increases gradually. Because the difference between the acceleration amplitude is not so large, then uh, the power water pressure uh, increases slowly. <coughs> the stress ratio of liquefaction and the shock wave is larger than that and the vibration wave. The resistance of sound to liquefaction is the largest than the shock wave, followed by vibration wave and the sine wave. <coughs> the damage effects of soil also depends on the stress parts of the stress piles. The larger stress piles regardless of its position, can produce larger power water pressure increment. 
When the smaller stress pulse appears, after larger stress, it will occur. It will cause damage, which is not proportional to the size of stress pulse. When it pe- when it appears before the larger stress, it will increase the anti liquefaction strength. There's some effects, <coughs> larger wave effects. Uh, means the response of strain and the power water pressure mainly depends on the action of larger stress pulse. And the first wave effect, uh, before the larger pulse, the earlier the medium stress pulse appears, the bigger the reaction is. Then is the continual wave effects. It is is it means after the larger pulse, the earlier the intermediate stress pulse is connected, the greater the reaction is. Next is buffer effects. That means the smaller the stress pulse is, the smaller the final value of the reaction is. Then the next is the strengthening effects. That means when the larger pulse is behind, the smaller the forward stress pulse is, the smaller the final value of the reaction is. Next is acceleration effects. When the power pressure is higher, the effects of small pulse will accelerate the process of deformation and failure. <laughs> then let's talk, talk about let's talk about talk about amplitude and frequency. The results show that as long as the acceleration is constant, there's a no significant difference in the dynamic response of soil and the different combination of low frequency, higher amplitude, and higher frequency, low amplitude. Sound with certain density and stress data can achieve dynamic yield earlier at higher frequency than at low frequency. Here, in this uh, uh, picture, uh, uh, the vertical axis is the uh, acceleration for liquefaction, uh, and the horizontal uh, axis is frequency. Uh, we can find that uh for 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 uh for the uh for the lower for the lower frequency uh, for the higher frequency uh that's need the lower acceleration to liquefy it. and uh there's uh, six waves uh, six curves uh, with different pressure uh, from bottom to top is uh, the pressure is 0, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 increase. Uh, that means a higher confining stress and need higher acceleration, acceleration to liquefy. Uh, next is the lasting time of dynamic load. It has great influence on the development of sound liquefaction, even if the amplitude of dynamic load is not very large. It may cause liquefaction of sound if the vibration time is very long. Then is the vibration direction. The response of vertical and horizontal vibration to the same test is almost same. 
but the vibration in forty five direction, forty five degree direction, can produce larger deformation or lower shear strength. Uh, in this picture, we compare uh, the the uh, one direction vibration and the multi direction vibration. Uh, vertical axis is the settlement due to liquefaction, and the horizontal axis is the uh, cyclic stress ratio. And for the old condition same, uh, uh, or we say we use a vertical line to find that uh, the multi-direction vibration will cause the larger settlement than that with one direction vibration. Here, uh, we also talk about the, the uh, one direction vibration and multi direction vibration. Uh, the vertical axis is the power water pressure ratio. Uh, and the higher this value, and the higher power water pressure. Uh, and the horizontal axis is the cyclic number of loud. Uh, we can find with the same uh, cyclic number. Uh, uh, the multi-direction vibration uh, 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 how to say uh, uh, the multi-direction vibration we will cause the higher power water pressure than that of one direction vibration. And uh, the bottom fig figure shows that the vertical axis is the uh, string, uh, and the horizontal axis is cyclic number. Uh. We can find uh, with the, the same cyclic number, uh, uh, multi-direction uh, vibration will cause the higher shear string. Than that of one direction vibration. Here in this figure uh, is uh, the vertical axis is the uh, the shear stress caused to uh, cause the liquefaction, and the horizontal is the uh, uh, cyclic number for dynamic load. And we can find the the, the higher uh, higher higher uh, stress, higher load, uh, higher load, and uh, lower cyclic number, uh, and uh, or uh, 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 we can find four curves uh, with different. Uh, Vibration types. Uh, the top one is the one direction vibration, uh, and uh, the second one is the elapsed shape uh, vibration, and uh, the third one is the cross uh, tap vibration, and the bottom is a circular vibration. Next is drainage condition. Uh, drainage conditions refer to the degree of water permeability and drainage parts and the boundary conditions. Usually, the test is carried out under undrained condition when liquefaction problems and the earthquake action is studied. Uh, uh, and uh, then Koki and uh, Hamida carried out a liquefaction test and uh, partial drain condition. The ratio of permeability coefficient K to C page diameter 1 was used to reflect the drainage condition alpha equal to K over L from Darcy theory. Uh, mu equal to